So far we have seen combinational circuits in the in this course on digital circuits. Next we will be looking into sequential circuits. So in sequential circuit what happens is that there is a sequence of events that can take place. Maybe you do not change the um, primary input, but still with the passage of time the, uh, the situation in the circuit changes. So typically uh, if there is a uh, moving display then we we'll, uh, we get some characters on the display for some time then after some time some other characters gets displayed so that type of systems there is a sequence of events that are taking place so this type of uh, uh, devices or this type of systems they are known as sequential digital systems so for the circuit design behind that so they will be uh, coming under this broad heading of sequential circuits so sequential circuits are digital circuits in which the output uh, outputs will depend not only on the current input but also on the previous state of the output so it is not only in case of combinational circuit like if we take one and gate so the and gate output is determined by the in the input combination that you feed at this point of time so it is not dependent on whether the and gate was previously 0 or 1 but if you give say 0 0 then the and gate will always produce a 0 or if you give 1 1 irrespective of the previous output of the AND gate, so it will produce a 1 value. However, in case of sequential circuit, so that may not happen because the output will also depend on the previous state of the output. So these basic sequential circuits uh, can be divided into two categories. One category is known as level sensitive, another category is known as edge triggered. So level sensitive means like when we are looking at uh, the operation of the circuit, so when are we expecting the circuit to change its state? So it may be that we want uh, during some uh, interval of time or we may want it at some precise instant of time. So if I uh, for example, so if I draw uh, a signal, so which is uh, in sequential circuit, so that is commonly known as uh, clock signal. So if I, if I have got a signal like this, okay, so it has got a high period and a low period. So you see this signal it has got some portion of the signal where the value is high and there are some portion where the value is low and there are some other portions other, in, other points of interest maybe this is a point of interest when the signal is going from high to low. Similarly say this is another point of in, uh, interest so where the signal is going from low to high. Now if we say that we are interested about the system behavior when the uh, when this particular uh, if this is the, the system if this is the system that we have designed so this is the uh, and it has got a number of inputs and number of outputs and there is a special signal which is commonly known as the clock signal where we feed an input pattern like this okay now we may be interested in the behavior of the system when this clock signal value is high or when the clock signal value is low so when this thing happens, so when we are interested about the behavior of the system when the clock signal is high, we say the circuit is high level sensitive. Similarly, if we say that we are interested about the system behavior when the clock signal value is low, so we say it is a low level sensitive. And as I have said, the other, uh, other type of option is when these uh, edges occur. So it may be that we are uh, bothered, we are interested about the system behavior when the clock signal makes a low to high transition. So this is called a rising or positive edge triggering and uh, in case of uh, this signal if we are interested about uh, when the signal is falling down, so if we are interested in that type of situation then we will say that the system is, uh, a, a system is uh, considering falling edge triggering so or the system is a falling or negative edge triggered system. Now depending upon our requirements, so we can, uh, we can design a system to be a level sensitive one or an edge triggered one and between them also we can think about uh, high level sensitive, low level sensitive or rising edge triggered, falling edge triggered. So depending upon the requirement, so we can design the circuit. Now another possibility is that we are interested in both of these events that is the this falling edge as well as this rising edge. So we are, we, we are interested about the system behavior when the clock signal is rising or the clock signal is falling. So this type of systems so they will be known as dual edge triggered system. So in, a, in this part, part of lecture, so we will slowly look into all these uh, different categories of uh, uh, sequential circuits and how to design those circuits. Now 
coming to the basic sequential circuit. So, this is a sequential circuit. So, it since it remembers the previous state of the uh, signal of the of the system, so there must be some memory element in it. So, you see that there are some memory elements in the system. So, if you forget about this part, this memory element, then it has got some input and it has got some output. So, that that part is a pure combinational circuit, but as if this combinational circuit it has got some further input coming from the memory elements and this combinational circuit it can also be divided into for uh, into, into two parts for example one part is determining this thing the from input and this uh, 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 previous state from the memory state memory element values so it determines the output another part is from the input and this memory element value it determines the next value of the memory elements so, as a user of the system, so we are, we, this memory elements are not of interest for us. So, we are bothered about these outputs only, but since this memory element inputs are also coming to this combinational circuit. So, what will happen is that this combinational circuit output will depend not only on this present input, but previously what was the content of the memory element. So, that will determine uh, the output. So, that is the sequential behavior. So, it remembers what was the previous state of the system. So, this memory elements, so they are also known as the state values, they are also known as the state values. So, the state values of the signal of, of the system uh, is remembered and then when this uh, next input comes, the state values are also taken into account to determine the output. So, we will, um, so that way we can uh, think about this uh, sequential circuits to be consisting of the basic combinational part and a set of memory elements. Another type of categorization that we can have in case of sequential circuit is synchronous sequential circuit versus asynchronous sequential circuit. So, in case of synchronous sequential circuit, circuit output changes only at some discrete instants of time and this type of circuits they achieve synchronization by using a timing signal called the clock. So, in uh, well, so just some time back I have already introduced the signal clock. So, naturally the question comes can we have a sequential circuit that does not have any such timing signal like clock. Okay. The answer is yes there can be. So, for the type of sequential circuits where we have such a distinct clock signal, so they that is known they are known as synchronous sequential circuits. On the other hand, there is asynchronous sequential circuit where there is no concept of a clock. So, it can uh, there is no clock and the output can change at any point of time. In case of synchronous sequential circuit, so we are uh, the output can change only at the clock boundaries, maybe uh, for level triggering it may be at uh, when clock is high or clock is low, depending upon whether it is high level uh, high level triggered or low le high level sensitive or low level sensitive. On the other hand, if it is edge triggered, so if it is whether it is rising edge triggered or falling edge triggered, so based on that only at uh, those points the circuit output can change. Whereas, for asynchronous circuit, the output can change at any point of time. So, we will see some example. So, this is the uh, typical structure of a synchronous sequential circuit. So, we have got this uh, combinational uh, input, the uh, combinational circuit that gets the input plus there are some memory elements, so which are commonly known as flip flops. So, we will see these flip flops after some time. So, these flip flops are there. So, these clock pulses are actually feeding these flip flops. So, these flip flops are activated when the clock signal is active. So, if we say it is uh, um, it is high level sensitive, then when the clock signal is high that is at this point, then only the values that are coming from the combinational circuit to the flip flops will be stored in the flip flop. Otherwise, when the clock signal is low, for example, during this period, whatever happens uh, to this combinational circuit, so these lines, uh, these lines will be changing, but that will not affect the flip flops. So, as a result, the state of the uh, state of the um, uh, circuit will not change. State of the circuit will remain unaltered. Only if, when the clock signal is active, then the input changes. Then only uh, these flip flops will change. Similarly, if we are uh, thinking about say edge triggering. Then, if we say that it is rising edge triggered, so the circuit uh, state will change only if the input changes around this. So, the input changes around this time, then only the circuit uh, the state out the, 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 the this flip flop contents will change, otherwise, it will not. So, this gives us advantage because uh, we, uh, the design becomes simpler as you will see. However, 
in some systems so we may not have this type of uh, clock signal and they are known as asynchronous circuits so this asynchronous sequential circuit so this is an example so here you don't have any clock signal in the system however if you are if i ask you suppose i give a equal to say uh, 0 and sorry if i give a equal to 0 and say b equal to 0 a equal to 0 and b equal to 0 so can you tell me what is the uh, value uh, what is the output so it is difficult because a equal to 0 b equal to 0 means these two bits are getting 1 1 so it is dependent what was the previous value of this out so it is dependent on that so until and unless i tell you what is the previous value of this out you cannot determine the next value of out so naturally so this type of circuits uh, this is also a sequential circuit because it depends on the previous uh, value or previous output of the circuit however it is there is no explicit clock signal in this system so it, it, it is it is not a synchronous circuit so this is an asynchronous circuit so this asynchronous circuits are also used uh, sometimes so we'll see the relative advantages and disadvantages of uh, these two types of systems so applications of synchronous so this uh, so this synchronous sequential circuit they predominate asynchronous sequential circuit so normally whatever sec sequential circuits we design so they have a clock signal in them and then uh, the, so the most of the circuits are synchronous in nature so you will not find much asynchronous uh, sequential circuit because of several reasons that we will see and this uh, typically used to perform activities that need to happen at precise times so at some regular time interval something has to happen that example that i took at the beginning like if there is a display then some character is displayed so there is a fixed amount of time for which one character will be displayed after that the next character will be displayed so this passage of timing so when the character will change so that is uh, space that is fixed so we can say that at fixed intervals of time we are ex expecting something to happen and something to happen in the system so they are synchronous systems so they are typically used to perform activities that need to happen at some precise times or if there is a conveyor belt on which items are moving and at regular intervals of time so we can uh, we, there may be a robotic hand which is picking up the items from the so from the belt so that also happens at some regular intervals of time so all these uh, examples so they will be leading to synchronous sequential circuits on the other hand asynchronous sequential circuits so they have got applications in signal processing because we do not know when the exact uh, signal will what, you, what is the clock of the clock, clock period of the arrival of this uh, signal so that is not known so we have to uh, be care, we have to uh, do it in an asynchronous fashion then one difficult one typical problem with the synchronous circuits is that so you are you know, the speed of the circuit is bounded by the clock signal that you are feeding so this clock is the clock signal is not very high so you cannot you know, do you cannot do operations fast so i may have different components in my in my system so they are operating at uh, they are all of them are synchronous sequential circuit then the delay of the slowest uh, module so that will determine the maximum clock frequency that i can have for the system whereas if this all these systems are asynchronous in nature then what can happen is that all of all the systems they can operate at their own speed and we, we may uh, get a faster system so the, the, maybe you can design an arithmetic unit which is much faster than this uh, register and all in the system so that way you get a fast arithmetic unit then simple microprocessors so they are made uh, asynchronous because of this speed achievement so we can do it like memory the static memory then then this ram uh, fifo first in first out buffer so they are all made this uh, they are made of asynchronous system iliac 4 machine so this is one of the computer early computer so they are made in asynchronous mode the why do we go for synchronous then so asynchronous has got so many advantages the major advantage is the simplicity so asynchronous uh, system so since we have to consider what is the previous value of the output at any uh, uh, whenever we are trying to determine like what is the current value of the output we are uh, we are faced with the question the what is the previous value of the output now this previous value means uh, be before how many how much time so that question has to be answered and in case of synchronous sequential circuit so you can just say it is at the pre previous clock period what was the situation 
or previous to previous clock period what was the situation. So, we have got a fixed interval or fixed instant of time at which uh, for of which we are talking about, but in case of asynchronous circuit, so we do not have this instance of time. So, that they are uh, the time becomes a continuous value there and then this previous time definition of this previous time becomes difficult. So, uh, synchronous circuits are generally much simpler to design and they are widely taught and understood okay, for the digital circuits classes. So, we normally uh, we normally go to the synchronous design only because that is uh, that is much easily understood and can uh, be easily taught. And in our course also for most of the designs, so we will be going to synchronous designs also available components. So, there are many chips uh, which are synchronous in nature. So, they, they are realizing some sequential circuit which are synchronous in nature. So, that is why we, ca we go for that. Then simple way to deal with noise and hazard. So, if some noise signal comes, so that can change the state of the system. Now, you see for synchronous sequential circuit, we have the advantage that if the noise does not come when the clock is active, then that noise is will not be able to affect the uh, system. So, oh, we can be we can we can concentrate only uh, for noise protection during the uh, clock active time. Similarly, hazard that we discussed in our previous classes. So, that also is uh, that effect will come only when we have got this uh, the clock signal active. So, otherwise particularly for edge triggered system. So, for very small amount of time we have to have we have to have the system noise and hazard free. Otherwise, this noise and hazard, so they are unable to affect the system state. What is the disadvantage? So, disadvantages of synchronous circuits are, are like this, it is sensitive to variations in physical parameters, because physical parameters like say if I have got a big circuit, then this uh, uh, the various parts of it, they are operating at uh, different speeds. And then uh, with the change of this temperature and uh, um, particularly this uh, power consumption and temperature, those values are also changing, the delay values are also changing. So, that makes it uh, difficult. So, that becomes sensitive to variation in physical parameters. It is not modular. So, you cannot uh, just add another module to this because that will determine the clock speed also. Power consumption. So, whenever uh, the circuit is active, so it will consume power. Now, in case of sequential uh, synchronous sequential circuit, what is happening is that is that uh, the at least the clock signal is changing at regular intervals of time, and uh, we have seen that for CMOS uh, type of technology, the power consumption occurs only when the input signals uh, change, the output, the input signals are uh, changing the values. So uh, as a result, the output is also changing. But in case of uh, sequential circuit, you know that even if we have got inputs unchanged, input remains same, so that output is also same, but the clock signal will always toggle. So, as a result, the power consumption due to this clock signal will come into picture. So, the synchronous sequential circuit power consumption will be high. Clock distribution is difficult due to clock skew. So, clock skew means, so if I have got a uh, if I have got a board on which I have got some systems made, now the clock signal is entering here. So, I have got a chip here, I have got a chip here, I have got a chip here and all of them are operating in a synchronous mode. Now, this clock signal is say distributed like this. Okay. If it is distributed like this, then you see that this delay of these paths, so they are proportional to the length. In fact, it is squarely proportional to the length. So, as the length increases, the delay increases severely. So, this it is it is intended that when the when the clock signal reaches this module at the same point of time the clock signal reaches here and also reaches there, but the way I have laid out this uh, clock line. So, it, it will not be it is not possible to ensure that. So, there will be a skew the time at which the clock reaches here uh, the, this third module will get the clock after some time delay. So, this is known as clock skew and it is so this clock skew if it is there then naturally. Uh, my when this uh, circuit is producing some output, so it is to be used by this module, say, say functional output produced by the module 1 is to be used by module 3. And if it is so, then uh, this module 1 it has produced the output when the clock signal was active, but at that time this the module 3 was not getting the clock, so it could not use the value. By that time may be some other thing has changed. So, that way that, that is why this clock skew is a severe problem and for synchronous sequential design. So, it is a challenge like how to distribute the clock signal through the uh, through, through the integrated circuit chip. 
Okay, so that's a uh, VLSI layout problem. So we'll not go further into that. So the clock distribution becomes difficult due to this uh, clock skew. And the maximum possible clock rate is determined by the slowest logic path in the circuit. So if I have got uh, some if I have got some combinational circuit, suppose this is a combinational circuit and this is feeding some flip flop. Okay, so, this is feeding some flip flop, this output is stored like the way we have seen the sequential circuit. Now, what is the what, what type of clock I can apply to this, uh, uh, to this uh, uh, flip flop. Okay. So, if this flip flop operates at a clock, so this combinational circuit it gets some input from outside, it does some computation and accordingly it produces the value here. So, the if this uh, flip clock is faster than the delay of this uh, combinational block, then what will happen? This flip flop will get some wrong values. So, the values uh, when I change this input values, so before the proper output has been computed, the flip flop will get, a, to get the value. So, as a result the value will be incorrect. So, what is required is that this clock should be slower than the delay of uh, this particular block. And there are several paths through this uh, uh, through this network. So one path may be like this, going through several gates. Another path may be like this. Another path may be like this. Now among these three paths, so whichever path is the slowest, so that is the critical path. So so this critical path delay. So this will determine the clock frequency, the maximum clock frequency at which I can operate the system. Okay. So this slowest logic path in the circuit, so that will determine. That is the critical path. So it will determine the clock period. So, that is another problem with the synchronous sequential circuits. Asynchronous circuit, the major advantage that we get is the high performance because there is no clock signal. So, I, I am not limited by the clock. So, I can operate uh, whichever module gets the data ready. So, it can start operating on the data and produce the result fast. Low power dissipation. So, if the inputs do not change, then the output will also not change. So, as a result, uh, there is nothing like at every uh, clock interval, so that the clock toggling will occur. So, that, that sort of thing is not there. So, this power dissipation is often much less compared to the synchronous sequential circuit. Low noise and uh, electromagnetic emission. So, this is also another issue like this. Uh, generally, it is seen that it does not produce uh, this uh, uh, high noise and electromagnetic radiations are also less because there is no such toggling. And good match with heterogeneous system timing, like if in a system I have got different uh, types of components and they are operating at different uh, frequency, then also we can uh, uh, have this thing. So, in fact, for this uh, heterogeneous uh, timing, so this leads to uh, one uh, particular type of structure which is known as GALS structure which is globally asynchronous globally asynchronous locally synchronous type of structure so that takes the advantage of both this uh, synchronous and asynchronous design what the idea is that so suppose i have got a system like this now, in this system, I have got several components. So, this is one component. So, this is another component. This is another component. So, they are interacting between them. So, there are some signal lines running between them. So, they are interacting. Now, they have got their, they are running at their individual clock. So, this is running on clock C1. So, this is running at clock C2. This is running at clock C3. But the clocks are not same. So, C1, C2, C3 are not same. So, uh, individually when you look at the system, so they are synchronous in nature, but if you look into the overall system, so that is a asynchronous system because there is no common clock synchronizing all the three subsystems. So, this type of uh, designs have become very, very popular because it combines the advantages of synchronous design that is the ease of design and all and the uh, advantages of this uh, um, asynchronous design where you do not have to have this global clock signal then this uh, power consumption, uh, high power consumption like that. So, they are not there. So, that way this GALS style of design have become quite common. So, next uh, at, at uh, disadvantage of asynchronous system is the substantial circuit level overhead because of this uh, a lot of feedback lines will be running 
since the clock signal is not there and this uh, sequential elements are often realized by with the combinational elements so as a result there will be a large number of uh, lines uh, running backwards so that's the uh, circuit level overhead is high and the set of cad tools so that is for asynchronous design so we don't have uh, this uh, very good cad tools available so far so that is the other problem and delay so delay in the sense that you have to you have to match the delays between two stages if both the stages are asynchronous in nature so you need to match the delay between the two stages and that also becomes a uh, concern okay so delay becomes a concern so we'll start with some latch circuit the first latch that we will look into is known as the sr latch the first uh, sequential circuit that we will look into is known as sr latch or set reset latch so this is the most basic unit of sequential circuit it has got two inputs s and r and two outputs q and q bar or q dash the two outputs must always be complementary that is if q is 0 q bar is must be 1 and vice versa so this is by the uh, specification of the sr latch so it says that it the, it is a it has to be a sequential circuit that will have two inputs set and reset and there will be two outputs q and q bar and by specification q bar should be complement of q it is further stated that the s input will set the q output to logic 1 and the r input resets the q output to logic 0 that is why s is called the set input r is called the reset input so the set input will set q to 1 and reset input will set q to 0 so a basic circuit diagram for this can be like this so it can we can take two cross coupled nor gates Okay, now you, you can understand that if I set this uh, in this uh, in this NOR gate, so if I set this uh, S to be equal to uh, 1, if this S is equal to 1, then this Q bar will be getting 0 and this, uh, so it, if it is uh, if it is uh, 0 here, then whatever be the Q bar, so it will be coming here, so this Q will be uh, coming back to this. So this set and reset input so let us uh, look into this uh, this truth table and try to understand suppose s and r both are 0 0 so if both are 0 if say uh, if both of them are 0 then what happens is so this is 0 and this is 0 so this is uh, this q is coming and this is a nor gate so what will happen is that this uh, q whatever be the q value so it will be coming at uh, as say q bar so this uh, this uh, q value will be coming and this is zero so nor gate so it will be q bar and this is q bar so when it is uh, uh, when it is uh, getting this uh, so this is equal to this will remain equal to q so if you look into this truth table when this s and r so q plus and q plus dash so q plus means what what i mean is that at the next time you need what will be the value of q so that is q plus and whatever uh, uh, and q uh, q dash plus means what is the value of q dash at the next time unit now you see that what happens is that if you give s and r as 0 0 then this q remains at uh, q plus remains at q and q plus uh, q dash plus remains at q dash that is whatever the value it was having previously so that value remains there now let us take the other combination let us take say this r e s equal to 0 and r equal to 1 then since this is a nor gate irrespective of the value of q bar this q will become equal to 0 and once this q be, and this uh, uh, and this q was coming here so this will be th this 0 comes here so this 0 will be making it 1 so you see that when this s equal to 0 and r equal to 1 we get the value q plus equal to 0 and q uh, q bar plus equal to 1 so that is the that is the reset so as if the flip flop has been reset or the latch has been reset the other combination like say 1 0 so if i give s equal to 1 and r equal to 0 then what will happen this will be setting this uh, so uh, by the similar logic so this q bar uh, this q bar output will be equal to uh, 0 because this s input is 1 this nor gate and this 0 0 going there so this will make this thing to be equal to 1 so what is happening is that q plus is becoming 1 and q uh, q dash plus is becoming 0 so that is the value is set and if it is 1 1 
then it is uh, we say that if I give it 1 1 then both the outputs will become 0 0 and by the specification. So, this is called illegal. So, this is illegal. So, we, we, we should not apply this 1 1. Similarly, if we take the NAND gate based realization also, so you, you will get you will see that if we do it take two cross coupled NAND gates and uh, take two inverters before a after S and R you get the similar type of tooth cable. So, this is the uh, logical symbol for this SR latch. Okay. So, we just uh, we give it uh, this is uh, this is shown like S and R being uh, different values if we put the Q and Q bar will be following this tooth table value. 